Commissioner? Okay, I'm going to go. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, thank you, Lord, for blessing us and saving us, loving us. Lord, uh, we thank you that you're some us together to hear your word on these the last days, and uh, which may be the last opportunity as well. We don't know. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, amen. Okay. <coughs> Today's message is basic <coughs> Christian attitude. I'm sorry, well, that's true too, though. Basic Christian education. Okay. Let's we'll look over the big picture here first. The big picture starts at Mark chapter 4, verses 1, and this is the entire verse. It describes the big picture. And he, I'll read it first uh, without the uh, intercession. And he, Jesus Christ, uh, and he began to teach by the seaside, and there were gathered unto him a great multitude, so that he entered into a ship and sat in the sea. And the whole multitude was by the sea on the dry land, on the land, I should say. That was how it read. We're going to go back and read it now with, with some understanding of what the Lord is trying to convey to us. And he that Jesus Christ began to teach, to teach, to teach, to teach, and that's what it's all about. He began to teach by the seaside. Now, we, do, we understand that water is a biblical symbol of the Holy Spirit. So he began to teach by the seaside. And there was gathered unto him a great multitude, a great multitude of people. So that they entered into a ship and, and, and sat in the sea. And they entered into a ship. And here within this particular uh, parable is the sheep is, is a biblical symbol of all humanity. And it's actually throughout the Bible as well. The sea is a biblical symbol of all humanity. And what to do is he entered into a ship there in, uh, here in an allusion to the Bible. That's the Word of God. The ship that carries our thoughts to heaven. What? You're all sitting there. What? what what's what's going to go to heaven? If, if any of you goes to heaven at all, what goes to heaven? Spirit. Yes. Which is your thoughts. Only your thoughts. That's it. Nothing else goes. Okay. And what carries us to heaven? What is, what is the, the, the object that, that is taking us along to heaven that we have the world time that we're using is called the Bible. That's what carries us to heaven. The words in the Bible carry us to heaven, aren't they? You see that analogy? Yes. Okay. And he entered into a ship that's allusion to the Bible, that's the word of God, the ship that carries your thoughts to heaven. And he sat in the sea of humanity. And the whole, and here's his, like, the whole is, is for emphasis. I mean, the whole multitude, that's all the people, I would say in the world actually, uh, uh, that was standing uh, by the seaside. I'm sorry, by the sea, on the, la on the, on the land. On the land. And the land was dry. Water is the center of the Holy Spirit. If you're dry, you have no Holy Spirit. You're not saved, you're not born again. Period. Okay? So what I was looking at, Jesus Christ, who was full of the Holy Spirit himself, okay, was teaching people who were standing on the land, unsaved people. What were they being supported by? They were being supported by the earth, the land itself. Well, the land is defiling. Uh, let, me look, let me give you a reference to, uh, 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 they were being supported by the defiling earth and Satan's habitation. Revelation 12, 9, the Satan was sent into the earth, okay? So Satan, what they were being supported by on the land was Satan. And that's when we're all born in sin. We're all born in sin. We're, we're being sure. and influenced by uh, Satan. And, uh, okay, we're getting on the dry land, uh, which is defiling earth, Satan's habitation, not supported by the water. These people are standing outside the water, outside the Holy Spirit, not being supported by the Holy Spirit. Unlike the ship, the ship was being supported by the Holy Spirit, wasn't it? It was in the water. Okay, that's the deal, you see. That's the Bible, the Holy Spirit. No Holy Spirit. Thus, uh, what, what was on what the multitude were, I'm going to uh, different, different ways of explaining it, was the unsaved multitude standing there. So now we're going to talk, we're talking about the whole unsaved multitude. 
Here's what happens. This is the path. The pathway to heaven begins with unsaved people. There's a path to heaven. And it begins with you being unsaved. It doesn't begin with you being saved. It begins with you being unsaved. Here it is. Mark chapter 4, verses 2 through 6. I'll read these through. And he taught them many things by parables, and said unto them in his doctrine, Hearken, behold, there went out a sower to sow. And it came to pass as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and the fowls of the air came and devoured it up. And some fell on good ground, where it had not much earth, and immediately it was sprung up, because it had no depth of depth of earth. But when the sun was up, it was scorched, and because it had no root, it withered away. That's the parable of the sower so to see parable. And Jesus Christ himself said, Know ye not this parable, and how then will you know all parables? All parables in the Bible, which means all these stories in the Bible, both old, old Testament and New. Okay? Because the Old Testament is itself a parable. So let's go back and examine what's happening here now. This is the path that has to begin with unsaved people, okay? First thing, we have four different types of soil. Every person in, uh, every person has something good like this. And that's four different ways, ways of thinking, okay? So, think of your mind as, it's like a round passenger, passenger. Uh, uh, <laughs> planting price, okay? So we're going to have four different kinds of soil. Everybody has the four different kinds of soil, so we'll see how that goes here in a moment. And he taught them by parables, which which mean a fictitious narrative for conveying uh, life, uh, uh, conveying common life, okay? And has a moral. And he said it to them in, in his doctrine. Now, his doctrine we're going to read is this progressive pattern of attaining eternal life with, with God. Does everybody here want to attain eternal life with God? Of course we do. We're, uh, I'm not going to raise your hand on, on that one. So this is the pattern. There's a pattern how to go about doing it. It's like there's a pathway to heaven. Okay, It's following the pattern. Here's the pattern where, where it begins. Okay. That's so many. He began the pattern and said, hearken. That means listen. Okay. Behold, we mean, look, 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 look at this now. There were not a sower to sow. There were not a sower, which means an obedient farmer in this case, okay, to sow. What was he sowing? He was going, sowing God's seed. And Luke 8, 11 tells us that uh, the seed is the word of God. So it first begins with a farmer, uh, uh, someone sowing seed. And it came to pass as, as he sowed, as he scattered the seed, some of the seed fell up by the wayside. Well, that's a type of soil. Uh, what is it really saying there? Fell by the way to heaven. Fell by the way to heaven. Okay? Fell by the wayside. And what happened to the seed, which is the word of God, that was that was being sown? And we hear this. this all these these four soils I'm going to talk about are all together in your head. All different types of places. Like, like you have a farm in your head, and you have four different types of pastures, four different types of areas, four different type, kinds of soil grow. And that's true with all farmers. Farmers don't, their land is not all consistent, one type of land, and they can grow, say, beets uh, best on that particular type of land. The land has got different, different nutrients in it in different places in their property. So one place they'd be growing corn, Another place they're going to pay because it's better for that area to have pay than corn because of the content of the soil and, and uh, so on. If the other went out, he sowed to show that the seed were going to came to pass, he sowed, scattered some of the seed, some of the word of God fell, to the, uh, uh, fell by the wayside. And what happened to it? Well, the fowls of the air came and devoured it up. The fowls of the air. Now, what is it? What is God? What is Jesus referring to? Fowls in the Greek means the birds of the air, uh, 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 which which means uh, Satan's thoughts, Satan's, Satan's emissaries, Satan's uh, angels. This is fallen angels. 
This is what came and devoured it up, devoured up, and made it of nothing. And some, now it was the first soil, and then, and some, and then some, some of the guys see fell on stony ground. That means into stony places, hard, hard places, hard to hard spots in, in your in your mind. Where, for example, if you're smoking cigarettes, the Bible even says, you know, uh, well, uh, it's not good. it's bad for your health. It's, it's not good. And, and, but you're still smoking. That's a hard place in, in your heart. That you're not giving up to God. Not only goes into the softer, better soils. But this is hard rock now, okay? Or for example, uh, uh, if, you, uh, if you swear all the time, God says, no, son, you're not supposed to swear. Okay? And so what it is, is that's a hard place in your heart that you want, you want to keep and not give it up to God. God wants you. God wants all of you. He wants, <laughs> he wants, he wants your entire body. He wants everything, all your thoughts. God wants. Right? But you don't want to give him everything. You're hanging out to stuff all the time. We all are hanging out to stuff. Sin in our heads, that, that thoughts and, and things that we do that we, we, we know we shouldn't be doing according to God's word. Okay? So that's what your life is all about is, is little by little, you're supposed to be giving up these, these bad areas and, and uh, uh, hard places in your heart. Hard places in your heart and giving them to God as a sacrifice. Just like I sacrificed cigarettes for a second. I, I like smoking cigarettes, but I gave it up. Uh, okay, first we saw that the fell by the wayside, and the fowls of the air came and devoured it up. And some, as some guys see, fell on stony ground where it had not much earth. And what really that means is it had not much meditation. You had, it was hard, a hard place. You didn't want to give it up, and you didn't want to think about it. Because the Bible didn't even think about it. You didn't want to think about it. And that, that's what God wants you. He wants you to think about what you're doing and, and what the Word is, and you didn't want to give it up. So it, 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 it had not much earth, not much meditation, and immediately, because it was thoughtless on your part, it sprang up. You know, oh, well, yeah, right, yeah, I believe that, yeah. But it had no depth, no comprehension, no understanding of the earth and truth, therefore didn't have any understanding, it didn't have any, there's no truth to it. It was just uh, uh, your initial enthusiasm. They believed for a while and then, then the belief falls away. <coughs> but when the sun was up, now the sun is what? Our sun is a consuming fire, is it not? What is, what is, what is God? He's a consuming fire. When the sun was up, when the sun and the, and the Greek says arose, arose, that means now, time to take a look and see what's going on here. Okay. It was scorched. This, this uh, stony ground was scorched, uh, 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 tested and burned. Tested and burned. And because it had no root, and no root is <coughs> Jesus Christ. And I'm referring to uh, Revelation 22, 16, my first footnote. Because that's important to understand what this means. That's kind of the key, a key to this, this parable. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright morning star. And what and these people had in, in, uh, uh, on the stony grounds, they had no Jesus Christ root in them. It's just they believed and then just passed away. <coughs> and it never took root. Well, if Jesus Christ doesn't take root in your heart, you're not saved. You're not born again. <coughs> but when the sun was up, it was scorched, that was tested and burned, and because it had no root, it withered away. And what withered away? Withered means a, a, a lack of water, a lack of the Holy Spirit. And because when you receive Jesus Christ from your Lord and Savior, you receive the Holy Spirit, it was it withered away, it was desiccated, that's what happens to a, a, a body that dies, it desiccates, it dries up. Desiccated, it shriveled, it beca it, because it had no root, it withered away. It uh, dried up, it lacked water. <coughs> now, I just read to you the two uh, types of soils of unsaved people. These are unsaved people, okay, that, by the way, side.
Well, they know about the Bible, some of the Bible, this, that, so on, so on, but not sticking in the room. They don't come to church. That's, that's generally the truth right there. Um, and that, that, that's, I'm getting harder and harder on that, but I'm getting to the point now they don't come to church. Just don't come to it. And I don't want to, I don't want to say any more of Russell. The one of his name was back there. That was, he was living with us. No, he was doing, we were just going to wait for a feed him, and he was living with us. He's a decent guy, but you don't want to come to church. He wants to work instead, work for Gary. Yeah, go ahead, work for Satan. Up to you. You don't come to church anymore. You don't live here. Sure. Okay, so now let's look at what happens. Now we have two other types of soils in your head still, because you have to progress through these. First, you start off. You start off uh, by the way that I, like I did, when people say, oh, geez, let me tell you about Jesus. Oh, nah, I don't want to hear Oh, but he does this, Jesus will help you, he loves you. Nah, I don't want to. I don't know, I was by the wayside. And they, they said it was a one ear and out the other in the block. And, uh, then I became a little bit kind of interested. All right? I started to, to think about it, just to listen about it. But I didn't want to give up anything. I just wanted to be me and be a Christian at the same time. Can't do that. Got to be sacrificed. Sacrifice. It's all about sacrificing yourself to God. And you can't be a Christian and be a natural man at the same time. And they have the Bible that you can't serve God and mammon at the same time. Mammon is one, of course, but it's the same thing. All right, so let's, let's talk about these people then. Mark chapter 4, verses 7 through 10. And some, that some of God's seed, fell among the thorns. And the thorns grew up. What happened to that? Oh, and the thorns grew up and choked it. And some uh, God's seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it. Now, uh, we look at the thorns. Thorns are, are uh, some of the seed fell among piercing distractions of this world. Some of the seed of God's word fell upon Here's a distraction of a world and had a, a, a problem there, okay? Like, well, uh, this a sin problem. Where you want to do something, but you know God doesn't want you to do it, but you want to do it, God doesn't want you to do it, so maybe do it a little bit, and it's it. Now we're talking now about drugs. Drugs and alcohol and things that, that, that invade you because the porn trick you. They invade you. They go in. The phones are dangerous from, their, 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 from the world, okay? And the many of us are, 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 are for example, the guy who uh, wants to say so, who, who's now working today, okay, well, that's a farm. Uh, it makes some money. I don't want to sit there listen to God. I don't want to make some money. Oh, go ahead. Do your thing. Okay. And so what happened in this? And the thorns grew up. And the thorns grew, you see. The thorns were solid grew because it's a direction. So eventually, you couldn't quit even you know, you wanted to, but you couldn't quit. You go like this, I want to quit, but I can't. I want to quit, but I can't. I want to quit, but I can't. And you're just going higher and higher and higher. Tough and tough. Can't get off it. And the fire broke and choked it. Choked what? Choked the word of God. Where did choke mean? In the Greek, it means strangled completely. Strangled it. What mean? It means to take, to take by the throat. It takes us, to, uh, they stop us from ministering to other people and doing other things that the God is thinking. And choked it, and it yielded no fruit. Let's go back and read that down again. Some fell among thorns, and the, the, the worldly thorns grew up and choked it, and it, it yielded no fruit. And that's what God wants. He's planted you, he's planted in you his seed, and he wants fruit to come out. So if he planted his seed is word, then what he wants to come out of you is more word. Simple as that. That's what seed brings, the word brings. Bring. Oranges bring oranges. Watermelons bring watermelons, and word brings word. And what happens here is he says, and, and if it gets the fruit, fruit, no fruit, and that's where this one stopped. But if I, if I re, 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 refer over to Luke chapter 8, verse 14, it says, and bring no fruit to perfection. And bring no fruit to perfection. Oh, no, that's different. There's a whole different deal going on now. Because you can't bring. No fruit, no, and this is, um, perfection means in the, in the Greek, 
to be reared to completion to maturity. You can't. I'm going to do it like this. How can you bring something that doesn't exist to perfection? Can you do that? Can you make something that doesn't exist to perfection? You can. So what we're seeing here is this kind of notice of progression now we have here. First we have uh, the, uh, uh, there's perfection, there has to be fruit. And if there's no perfection, there's no fruit. So these people Can't use them because they're not they're not right, okay? And then is they're they're right. That tree brought no fruit, brought fruit, but brought no fruit to perfection. Then then that to maturity. Lovers are like that. And really we I say this, probably we're all like that to some degree. We all have problems in us that we haven't perfected yet, that God wants us to to, to get rid of to, to perfect, for example. Like for example, go back to the hard case of food and drugs. God, you've got to choose someday. I mean, that's, that's it. You can't, you can't go around uh, your life. Uh, well, I, I, I can't be the judge, but the, the Bible indicates that uh, uh, you're not going to go very far with being a druggie. Not with God. You, you, you sit here and listen to, listen to the word all day long, but uh, if what you're obeying is not God, what are you obeying? That's the leader. God wants you to obey him. If you obey him, you won't obey the drug guys. But if you're obeying the drug guys, you're not obeying God. Well, you can't get to heaven if you're obeying the drug guys over God. You can't make God number two in your life. What do you want? You want to keep on doing drugs? Then fine. Go to whatever they call heaven, because it ain't, it ain't the heaven that we're going to. Because they're not obeying God either. You either obey God or not. shaved and born again are living in this type of condition, type of world, where we're being distracted by the things of this world. That's a continuous thing for us. Right? And we're, what we're doing is it, 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 the distractions want us to obey them, and we don't want to obey them. That's a big spiritual fight going on inside of all our heads right now. And so, <clears throat> that alone at this point in time. You go to the second place now. So we know that these people are saved, but they're having a lot of problems with their habits and things and the way they, they uh, act with them. Act, okay? Among thorns. And now we go into good ground. And this is the soil in your head. <coughs> and everybody has some. Nobody, God has not left 
you without any good ground in your head. You are all have all four soils. And everybody here has good ground. So everybody then has the potential to go to heaven. Everybody has the potential to go to heaven. And God's seed fell on good ground and yielded fruit. Ah, what did it yield? What are fruit? Well, in the Bible, fruit are revelations. <clears throat> fruit are revelations. Seed, so the seed is sown, and then the revelation grows and grows and grows, and then becomes apparent. And that's the fruit that God wants you to have. <clears throat> have you been? Have you received revelations from God? Well, you can't receive revelations from God if you don't read read the Word. <coughs> Excuse me. You have to be reading the Word to get the revelations. Okay. Period. If you don't, if you're not reading the Word. You're, you're probably not even really saved. You might think you are, but uh, you're probably not even that. Well, that means a very bad story. Doesn't mean it's not too late to change, but it does mean that it's pretty real right now. The Word will come. And so this is it. Okay, how are you doing? And, <laughs> and you're not safe. You're not, you're not going anyplace. And this yielded fruit that sprang up and increased and brought forth some 30 fold, some 60 fold, and some 100 fold. So the good ground is a ground that we all want to be on. We want to be harvesting and working on the good ground. Although we are still have, we still have the uh, thorny ground that we're living with. We're living on the thorny ground, and we're, we're working, trying to work our way on and so some of the good ground. We're, 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 actually, all of us who are saved and born again have some good ground that's being, that's, that's yielding some kind of fruit to some degree, okay? But we just want it to yield more and more and more. He that had ears to hear, let him hear. And was, when he was alone, they were, were they were, they, they that were about him, with the twelve, asked him the parable, asked him about the will. Now, that's an interesting thing. Who does that indicate? They that were about him, with the twelve. So not only the twelve apostles talking about, talking about the other people like us, who were with him as well, okay, who are saved and born again and with him, asked him about the parable. Now, this is a, this, this parable is, is the most important parable in the Bible, number one. And, and secondly, um, if you just look at the progression of what happens to us as we get not saved and then we get saved. Now, you can be saved and born again and be a druggie. Now you're living in both worlds again, okay? When you start putting God number two in your life, then you have real, real problems, okay? But hopefully you can progress through that stage here, which is where we all are right now. I would assume that we're all here, we're all saved. We're all among, among the thorns. The things of the world are, are distracting us. Drugs and alcohol, and lying, cheating, stealing, all these things are distracting us. But we're here, but we're here. Trying to, to get to, to work our, our good will. And uh, what do I say? That's a picture of your mind right there. Four kinds of soils in your mind. From God's point of view, it's a picture of your mind, so it ought to be a picture of your mind. God's saying you've got four kinds of ground in your head. In your head. Okay? So what you ground out, it receives. The ground will receive seed, receives information, receives you got four types of it. And the first two types, and you know where you are, if you're not by the wayside, or you wouldn't be here right now, I think, anyway. Although it's, some people prefer to you Most of you on staff are among thorns. You're being distracted by things in this world. Does that mean you're not going to heaven? No, it doesn't mean that at all. You're still going to go to heaven. Just that you have some problems. It's like this. Heaven has a hierarchy of uh, angels, meaning there's a it's a structure, just like it's a military structure, as a matter of fact. Okay, a two Timothy two tells us that it's a military structure, and you have different military positions. And what we do is we start at 
at the, the lowest position in heaven and work, and work our way up. If, but that's that's a wrong statement. You don't do that. When you die, God's going to take everything that you've done, everything that you said, and evaluate it. And then He's going to assign you a place to work in the military organization. Okay. Now I don't know if you know ranks, but you might be uh, like a, a private, like just you just made it. Okay. Or or a, 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 a sergeant who, who's been there for a number of time and knows something and is able to handle responsibility in other people, or uh, an off a low, low ranking officer that, uh, that does book work and does things, and, and so you control more people and more, you have more responsibility, see. Uh, or you can be a high ranking officer, depending upon what you've been doing when you're in this world, because it goes, it transfers over, okay? Uh, and uh, you've been charged, <coughs> what does it say here? Say that uh, some people, uh, the, the parable goes that some people will receive, will receive uh, authorization control over five cities, and some people over ten, some people over three, and so on and so on. That means, that means you have a lot of authority you're going to have in heaven to do a lot of things. <clears throat> but you are learning that authority now by the things that you do and don't do. For example, in the military, mostly the best way to get ahead in heaven or get, 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 get in the military is not to do anything that the military doesn't approve of. Uh, if you go through, because they grade you all the time, so that uh, they evaluate you all the time. So if you evaluate it positively all the time for everything, then you're going to get to a higher rank. You're going to be more responsible. All right? But what that also means is that you may be more obedient. The more obedient you are to the word, the more responsible you're going to be in heaven. It's as simple as that. Because God's going to give you authority over cities, or towns, or, or uh, actually, uh, the Bible says that we're going to go out into the universe and preach the gospel to the creature over planets and solar systems. There are people out there, there are angels who do that. We're going to be angels, of course, doing that. You're earning, you're earning, is it boot camp now? This is boot camp. It's not easy. I've never seen an easy boot camp. Uh, where that's where you take people in brand new, you don't just hand them a gun and say, go out into the field. What you do is you train them first to do what you want them to do. Not everybody gets it done. Some people get pens and benefits to work with instead. Okay. But it works out in terms of authority. Now you're being trained now for exactly that. Every one of you. You've been chosen. How were you chosen? You got saved and born again. How many people do you think are, are saved and born again out there, really? Not, not a whole bunch. There's a lot of Christians out there, but how many of them are saved and born again? That's a different deal with Carlo. Okay? You've been chosen by God. Actually, have been chosen by God. No matter how little you think you're contributing to God's economy, to, to the kingdom of God at this point in time, you're contributing something or you wouldn't be here. God wants you, and he wants to teach you, and he wants you to grow and learn to be obedient. The Bible says obedience is better than sacrifice. Wow, how about that? Obedience is better than sacrifice. Obedience to, obedience to God is better than sacrifice. So you need to think about what you're doing during this restoration and, and uh, elsewhere where you, where, where you uh, live. Uh, what are you doing for God? How is this helping the kingdom of God? For example, the people working here at the mission are helping the kingdom of God just by working, working here at the mission. Because this is, this is this is part of the kingdom of God. Okay? But then, how hard do you work? I mean, how, how much do you work? Do you just sit around and uh, not do anything all day and, uh, and, 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 eat, and eat and then go take off again? And that's not what you're going to think of God. You're here to help. And I'm here to help you. And I'm, helping, I'm being helped as well. We're all being helped. Now, I'm not the highest guy on the totem pole by far. <laughs> Low range kind of fellow. We're going to have to get up into those high range kind of guys. The point I'm making, again, everybody in the world has this kind of ground in their head. Good ground. Everybody. How do we know that? Well, let's look, to, let's look at the final thing here right, on, on the uh, uh, postscript commentary. Everybody's mind. Everyone's mind contains four kinds of soil in varying amounts 
depending upon the words of God, it, 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 oh, excuse me, I'm sorry, in varying amounts upon which the words of God fall, like lively sparkling raindrops. The last is just my addition. Everybody here, everybody's mind contains four kinds of soil. Now let's look at 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 3 and 4. This explains it. For this is good and acceptable in the, in the sight of God, our Savior, who will have all men to be saved. Whoa, how about that? All men to be saved. Now, God is certainly going to make provision for a way for you to be saved, if he wants you to be saved, he's making a way for you to be saved, right? Because if he wants all people to be saved and he doesn't make any provision on how to get there, that means nothing. He's made a way for everybody here and everybody you know to be saved. What is it? It's the pathway to heaven. And that's this pathway. Right there. Starting with by the wayside, we are completely non believer, and you go from there to Stony Ground to Monk Thorn. That's heaven. That's heaven. And everybody in the world has it. Because why? How do I know for sure? I know guarantee for sure because it says here that it's God our Savior uh, who will have all men to be saved and to come into the knowledge of the truth. Who have all men to be saved. So everybody has this inside them. Second footnote, commentary. Therefore, God has provided both among the thorns and ground and good ground, readily as accessible within all men. But they themselves choose to work the ground or to not work the ground. They themselves choose to work the ground or not work the ground. And here's how to work the ground. Timothy, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. Study to show thyself approved unto, unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. That's the work we do right there. For the whole thing, that's the work that we're doing. God says he wants all men to be saved, which means he's made provision for all men to be saved. Because you can't get saved unless God has made it, made it so. And what that is is right here. You go through this period, and you go through that period, and you never get over some of this stuff here. And you go through this period, and you get to this period. And hopefully, we are living on both these sections right here. So you click around the same people. So everybody out there is, is walking around, and you, you say, well, come to church, this, so and so on. Oh, I don't want to that. They don't know it. But, but God's already got, it, got good ground in their heart. But they just don't know it. He, God has already made provision for that particular person to be saved and born again and go to heaven. Already done. The person walked around ignorantly. I don't need that. I don't need that stuff. I got my own this or whatever. See how ironical it is? And what we do is we wake them up. We teach them. We tell them. We teach them these things. And, no, teach them that you got to wait inside you to get to heaven. All you got to do is say okay and agree to work the ground. And agree to work the ground. And here's the ground that you start with. You start with here and go right on through. And still, even, even a saved and born again, we still got some stony ground inside of us. We still got things inside of you that you don't want to give up still, even though you are saved. But the point is, is that you've been working all this ground. Whereas most people out there who we're talking to don't know anything, they're all by the wayside. Where's the wayside? It's a pathway to heaven. They're ignoring the pathway to heaven. Say, let me, you say, let me tell you about heaven. Oh no, I don't want to. Uh, and they're ignoring the pathway to heaven. It's running alongside it. All they have to do is step into it. And you go to heaven for sure, forever. What do you want? You want to walk around eating uh, hamburgers and doing whatever you do in this world for all eternity? Think about that. It's not possible, you know you're going to die. Well, we're going to go. Which pathway are you on? Are you on the pathway to hell? 
listening to Satan, being supported on land. Are you on the dry land without any Holy Spirit? Being supported by Satan, by the earth, by Satan? Or are you on the water? Are you in the water? In the boat with Jesus? In the boat with Jesus! Heading to the promised land. That's what we're in. This is the boat. The Bible. We're, we've gotten in and he said to his disciples, get into, get into the boat. He said that. Get into the boat and go to the other side. All right. That's where we're going right now. We're in the boat. We're going to the other side. Wake up. You're already in the boat. If you're saved the born again. And if you're not, well, you wouldn't be here, actually. What's the most important thing in your life? It is not how much money you make or how, much, how many things you can get going or how high you can get. It's what's going to happen next? Because this ain't going to last forever. You're going to die. Absolutely for sure. You and me, all of us, are going to die. And then we're going to come out of here. Then what we did in these bodies is going to count toward what, what we didn't do in these bodies is going to count for what happens to us in heaven. What do you want to be in heaven? You want to mow lawns? Not a problem. You hang around down here in your in your mother's garden, but you're in the story ground too, and you got things you can't give up, and this thing is telling you to do this, this is doing this, one. You can go up there and mow lawns for all eternity. You want to do that? What do you want to run cities or, or uh, countries or planets? The Bible says hey, we're all we're all soldiers for God. Uh, and to Timothy, soldiers of Christ or Jesus Christ. You're a soldier. Act like a soldier. Realize what's going on. Everybody can get saved. Everybody can get saved because of this deal right here. Everybody can get saved. God's made provision for it. He wants all to be saved. Help. That's, that's the big thing. A little like this. That's my thing. That's what I do. I've read that and you know, things like that. That's what I want to do. Encourage people. I want to evangelize people. I want to get them saved. Okay? That's what I do. That's what you can do too. All you can do is just tell them about God. Every little bit comes. Now that's the basic Bible right there. Basic Bible education, I should say. That's the deal. The whole deal. And I've gone over and over many times. You've heard it to me, but I've never gone over it as deep as I did today. And every time I hit this parable and do it again, <clears throat> it goes deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. And I've probably done it 150 times. And it gets deeper and deeper and deeper because God is opening up doors for me. Opening up doors. Opening up doors. Because I'm working the ground. I'm toiling it. I'm digging it up. I'm plowing it up. And I'm getting rid of the stones. What happens? When I was a kid and I was a farmer and a kid, my dad would go out my dad to the field and he'd be out there doing something and had me in the field. He would be uh, digging it up uh, with a flower and I'd come out and get rid of all the stones. Take all the stones and I had to take them all the way over to the side of the stone there, go back and then get more stones. It's like, like, you know, like a seven year old kid. And uh, the same thing with the weeds and the weeds and the things that were there with the farms. That's what you got to do. We're all farmers, farming our land. Are you taking care of your land? Oh, this is a good parable, I should read. I don't know what it's called, what it's exactly about. I, I, I went by the field of the, of the slothful. I went by the field of the slothful, that means lazy guy. And it was all covered with weeds and stones and so forth and so on. And that's what happens. And that's <coughs> So, now it brings me to this. We're interested in getting people born again saved. Because God says that we can pray with them and they can receive Jesus Christ and we're going to save them. I'd like to do that. We have an internet congregation out there who don't know us. Right? And so what I would like to do is I'd like to tell all of us, we here, I hope that in any case we're all saved born again people. So what I'm going to ask you to do is in a moment is to stand and say this prayer with me. We can act like the cross and angels escorting those people to the Lord. That will be working the land and each and every one of you a little bit. 
And then after that, we keep praying more. You know, I got to the point, I feel like to pray for 500 people a night. I got to the point where I can't do it anymore. <laughs> I mean, geez, it's like taking me half the night. It seems like anyway. Uh, so uh, all my memory is gone. So, uh, the, uh, but I do what I can. Uh, and I want you to do what you can too. Right? So let's all rise now. Please say this prayer with me. <coughs> All right, let's say this together. Father God, Father God I, confess I'm a sinner. I confess I'm a sinner. Please forgive me. Please forgive me. I, believe I believe that Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ died on the cross, died on the cross and paid the penalty, paid the penalty all, my all my sins and was resurrected. Was resurrected. Thank, you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father God, Father God please, send your son, please send your son, your seed, your, seed, your, love, your love into my heart to be the Lord, be the Lord and Savior of my life. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Father God. Amen. 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 Praise God. Praise God. Well, let's, let's, let's sit down and uh, we're going to have we're gonna take, take tithes and offerings now. You know, I've spoken extensively about the tithes and offerings. Uh, it's a matter of obedience to the Lord. That's what we're looking at. God is asking, you know, God knows your heart. So he knows what you're, what you're, he knows what you're really, in your heart, what's going on. You can, you can put nothing in there, or you can put 10 cents or $10 or $1,000 in there. It doesn't matter what it put in. God's looking at your heart when you do it, okay? So, and he knows what hurts and what doesn't. This is called the sacrifice. This has got to hurt a little bit. And when it hurts his mouth to us, the Lord said 10%, okay? That was the original number. 10% of your profit. He doesn't want 10% of everything you own. He just wants 10% of what's the profit you made today or the last week or so. And if you're obedient, you're, you will do that. And he said, if you're obedient to me, I'll open the windows of heaven above you so you cannot complain. All the, all the, the benefits, all the blessings that will come down upon you if you're obedient. And he says, also, again, if you're not obedient, there's a contract. You'll be cursed. <coughs> so that's the deal. What do you want to be? And what's it worth to you to be blessed by God? <laughs> to me, it's priceless. It's, it goes on and on. It's a, it's a life dedicated. Really, I wish I could have dedicated my life more to God. But I'm still doing so something. All right, Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for blessing us and saving us and loving us. Lord, thank you for this word. We ask that it, it to come upon ears to hear, Lord, and that, the, uh, that they react accordingly. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, amen. Praise God. Thank you.